over a year ago, Hurricane Irene swept up through the eastern seaboard, leaving millions of people without power and many without connectivity. Although this event was tragic, there was one system, one small data center, that remained up and running during this time. Now, while other systems had backup, what's unique about this system is that they did not burn any fossil fuels in order to keep that data center up and active. During the 18 hours that power was out, this system, this data center, located at SCT headquarters in Exton, Pennsylvania, was up and functioning in a completely sustainable way. My name is Mark Alros, and I work with Comscope as Director of Technical Sales and Services. And I'm here today to talk about a vision for a sustainable future for our critical infrastructure. What I'd like you to do with me today is to try to envision a future where we can deploy technologies that are low cost, that impact our operational expenses, but are also very sustainable. Sustainability does not necessarily need to be expensive. It can also happen with a lower cost of operation. So if you would envision that with me today, the benefit to you, I think, is that you'll get to identify existing technologies today that will A, be green and sustainable, B, will be low cost, and third, and perhaps most important, will be extraordinarily reliable for your systems. I'm going to introduce this by talking about three specific topics. One, I'm going to talk about technology and how a technological solution could help you. Two, I'm going to talk about intelligence and how an intelligent network can offer you solutions that are more applicable than, a, uh, than the networks potentially that you're using today. Third, I'm going to talk about some specific energy-related solutions that I hope, uh, I hope you'll find uh, very intriguing. So let's start with technology. On the technology front, edge qualms are something that are being deployed today primarily because as our narrowcast services continue to increase, the demand for, for these services continues to increase. The need to deploy more and more qualms in your architecture uh, continues to rise. Well, along with deploying these additional qualms, you have a need to deploy more boxes, more wiring, more power consumption, and potentially more air conditioning in some cases. So it can lead to some extraordinary difficulties as you try to expand the capabilities of your system. One technological solution that can help you address this today is the high-density edge qualm. High-density edge qualms are available today that can offer a very large reduction in power. Uh, a system that traditionally would provide qualms requiring power of almost 10 watts per qualm are available today at a power level of a half a watt per qualm. Now, as you deploy these units, uh, which are fully redundant, uh, the likelihood that you're going to deploy and fully fill this, this quam capacity is unlikely right out of the, right out of the gate. However, uh, even in a in a modest deployment of this solution, you can easily achieve a three times power reduction over what you're doing today. Second, these high dense high density solutions uh, save a tremendous amount of space. Compared to a traditional 1RU QAM deployment, uh, these high density solutions can offer a 10x reduction in the amount of space and along with that in the complexity of the wiring that's deployed. So you combine the power reduction and the space reduction together and you have a much simpler, much more reliable system, particularly when you add in the full redundancy of these carrier class devices. So you end up with, in the field, a fully redundant system. And we've even shown in some deployments that the temperature in the hub sites where these solutions are deployed is reduced. You end up with a significantly lower uh, load on your HVAC system. So second, 
wanted to talk about intelligence and how intelligent components can age your, uh, age your architecture. By deploying an intelligent tap system, or an addressable tap system is, is another name for this solution, you can eliminate the truck rolls that are typically required when you subscribe or unsubscribe customers, or when you change the services that are associated with that account. These addressable systems allow you to not only turn on and off subscribers from a remote location, but they additionally will allow you to selectively turn certain services on and off through RF filtering capabilities. So these solutions are primarily going to impact and benefit your system related to reduction in truck rolls and the carbon that's associated with those truck rolls. This uh, particular solution was actually brought up just in the last day or so uh, at a sustainable management subcommittee meeting where we're discussing energy options and the benefits of energy reducing technologies that are existing today. Third, I wanted to address some specific energy affecting technologies and, and solutions that are available today that can have a major impact on your system. The first is free air cooling. Anywhere you have a hub site or a head end, you have a tremendous amount of heat that is being generated that has to be dissipated, that has to be dealt with. So the air conditioning systems in these areas are running continuously in order to drive the heat uh, from, from these devices. However, you also have ambient air outside these locations that is potentially at a lower temperature than what's inside the hub. So in those instances, you can utilize that outside ambient air by drawing it through a filtered intake. You can replace the hot air inside the hub with the cooler air that is outside. These free air cooling systems can significantly reduce the runtime of air conditioning units, and additionally, they can replace or manage the heat dissipation in the hut or in, or in your head end during times when the air conditioning unit may be in fail mode or you may be in a backup situation. This graphic shows specifically a field trial area where this shelter cooling was deployed. If you start at the beginning of the graph on the left hand side, you can see the air conditioning power consumption and the overall hub air conditioning uh, hub power consumption. And you can see that they track very closely. The first attempt that was made in this, in this small site was to increase the ambient temperature in the site from 25 to 30 degrees C. But as you can see, the impact on the air conditioning and power usage in that hub site was not affected by this change. The next thing that was attempted was to take the batteries out of the hub because the batteries were in a thermal electric cooling uh, system and we were concerned that that system might have been contributing additional heat into the, into the hub. But we removed those as well, still no effect. But in the fourth book block, you can see where the free air cooling was added and by adding that free air cooling system, we experienced a 70% reduction in air conditioning costs and a 30% reduction in overall system costs on average. So it made a tremendous difference to be able to utilize the ambient air outside, pull it into the hub site when the temperatures uh, made sense. This next energy solution is a passive optical network, or PON. PONs, uh, or RFOG systems, EPON, GPON, these systems are all based on a fully passive optical network, which eliminates the use of amplifiers in the, as we utilize in HFC networks. So, in this example, a system had an HFC plant area that was consuming 40 kilowatts of energy just to power all of the amplifiers between the, the hub site and the home. What they were able to do by replacing that system with an RFOG system, RF over glass, or a, a passive optical network, 
was to reduce that power consumption from 40 kilowatts to two and a half. So you can see there's a significant power advantage to deploying passive optical networks, and additionally, you gain the benefits of reduced maintenance and potentially increased bandwidth and capabilities by deploying these type of networks. The final energy solution that I'd like to discuss is a hydrogen fuel cell for backup. I mentioned this at the uh, beginning of the presentation. The hydrogen fuel cell solution is what was deployed at SCT headquarters in Exton, Pennsylvania, what allowed them to operate for 18 hours during Hurricane Irene without burning any fossil fuels. Hydrogen fuel cells are an electrochemical device, so they have next to no moving parts. The cell stack itself has no moving parts. You simply apply hydrogen, and the electrons are run around the outside, creating an electrical circuit, while the protons are pulled through the catalyst uh, to made up with oxygen on the other side. The only output of this fuel cell, other than electricity, is water and heat. So unlike a diesel generator, which has mechanical parts that can fail, which burns fuel, fossil fuels, and pollutes, these fuel cells, with next to no moving parts, are highly reliable, highly efficient, and very green. So with next to no maintenance, you can rely on these hydrogen fuel cells to operate when you need them without paying attention to them when you don't need them. So I hope that uh, I've been able to cast a little bit of a vision for you uh, during this time of some solutions that are available today that are highly reliable, highly sustainable, and can actually advantage you in terms of operating expenses. Sustainable solutions don't need to be more expensive than traditional solutions that we're using today. What I would encourage you to do is try to envision for yourselves what you can do, what your system could utilize to take advantage of some of these technologies. If you have any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you here, or uh, I would also encourage you to stop by Comscope's booth, uh, number 2822, all the way at the back of the show, and I hope that uh, you'll be able to get your questions answered there as you learn more about these opportunities. I thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Yes, sir.
generator that you're looking at deploying, the number of battery strings you're looking at deploying, and the size of the fuel cell that you're looking at deploying. All of those inputs need to be calculated to run a, uh, a business case. Okay? Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it.